the second of the uh, Mobile Commodores. And that, of course, is uh, Larry Perkins. Hey there, welcome to another Heavy Metal Diecast video. Bathurst edition, obviously. And today's bad boy we got here is a, uh, we saw the introduction of uh, the 1991 Holden VN Commodore SS Group A SV. <laughs> So this is the brand new, brand new Commodore. They've uh, started racing, uh, so no more VLs anymore. Although some VLs were racing in the 1991 Bathurst to his 1000, but uh, and the 1991 race was another race that was dominated by turbo cars, and uh, Nissan actually did have a front row lockout, and they did end up finishing the race first and third, with the uh, mobile car number 16 in second place to split up those two, and. This is the, the team car, uh, number 11, obviously. And uh, this was driven by Larry Perkins and Thomas Mazira. But um, unfortunately uh, for them, uh, they failed to finish the race and they actually retired um, on uh, lap 65, even though they did have a really good qualifying. They qualified sixth for the start of the race. But what we'll do is we'll have a look at the, the VN itself. It's it's a it's a little bit bigger than the um you know the VLs and the VKs so it it, do, it does sort of sit a little bit more bigger in the hands but we'll have a look underneath first and uh, this is a beautiful example by Bianti in one eighth scale obviously but um, we'll have a look at some of those uh, really nice details there it's got whole engine details it's got all all underneath it's really well done of course. What else is new? I mean, they make some really, really quality cars. And, of course, you know, steering does manipulate the tyres. as They've got some softness within them. And um, I think overall it's, you know, it's a nice-looking mobile car. And uh, I think it's uh, pretty cool. So we'll, we'll check out the uh, the rear end of it. It does have some little like, accessory parts here. So when you you sort of do open the, the boot and these, these bits just do sit there hanging, waiting to go back, back on there. And um, overall, I think uh, if you look in the detail in there, there's, there's so much detail inside there. It's phenomenal. So we'll, we'll close that boot back down and um, we'll go to the uh, driver's side. Windows down, which makes it handy. So we'll open that driver's door and we'll have a look inside. And as you can see, that it's got some really fantastic detail in there. Um, you definitely won't be disappointed with this. Uh, definitely these are becoming more and more race car <laughs> if that's a word. But, uh, yeah, they're definitely st st straying away from the uh, the factory sort of uh, look now. And these are becoming purely race-orientated vehicles. Um, but once again, all four doors do open. Um, and it does pre present well. But uh, I won't open those doors now. I will just take some photos of, of it like that. But um, the detail on the wheels and everything like that is really nice. It's got a you know, two sort of sets of wheel, different wheels on there. Um, I guess they were trying some uh, airflow direction on the front brakes. But um, the front of it, you know, it's nice and, you know, nice and sort of neat. It's got the mobile sort of livery on there. And we'll get to the important part, and that's opening the bonnet. You've got to sort of pull it a little bit forward because it's actually got... Um, proper hinges <laughs> so uh, you've got to be really careful with with opening this but the uh, detail inside like under that bonnet is really nice and you've just got to close those hinges close it again properly um, that's the first for me with that kind of uh, hinge setup it is quite unusual but um, I mean it's it's very realistic to, to say the least uh, I, I think you know it's a bit of a novelty but um, at least, you know, they, they uh, look like they're proper hinges and everything like that. It's not just um, a sort of a, some cheaper models have like a generic um, sort of hinge on there for the bonnets and they don't even go up far enough, but that one went up perfectly and uh, it's a lot of detail on those hinges just themselves. So, but I, I think overall the car itself is really well detailed. Um, you'll be extremely happy with it yourself if you do, you know, end up getting one. Um, I don't know how readily available, once again, they are because I've had this one for a number of years. So um, I'm assuming it's not available to buy new anymore. So you will have to sort of uh, snoop around on that secondhand market and try and find one out. But, um, you know, if you're lucky enough to grab one, then yeah, 
It's, it's a pretty, pretty cool model to sit on your shelf. And it's, you know, reasonably sized. Um, I reckon it's, it's definitely pretty cool. Um, I don't have a problem with it, but what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll wind this up and um, I'll take the happy snaps of this bad boy without these sausage fingers in the way, you know the deal, and chuck this on a turntable and you can see it spin around. <laughs> And uh, what I'll do is I'll uh, post them all up at the conclusion of this video, so stick around to that. Um, and um, if you like the video at all, just yeah, throw us a thumbs up if you can, if you can spare those couple of seconds, and even subscribe to the channel if you're you know, enjoying what you're seeing. Uh, I'd like, you know, thank you very much for you know spending the time you know, watching my video. I hope you did enjoy it. And um, once again, thank you. So you guys have a great rest of your day. Cheers, guys.